By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what Neuralink has accomplished so far and what the company plans to do next. We'll go over how many people are living with the implant, what they can currently do with it, how Neuralink expanded trials across multiple countries, and what new features like speech decoding and vision restoration are on the horizon. Founded by Elon Musk in 2016, Neuralink set out to build the world's first scalable brain-computer interface, technology that could restore movement, speech, and even senses like sight and hearing. Nine years later, that vision is no longer theoretical. It's real and being used by people every day. Today, at least 13 human patients are living with Neuralink's implant, the N1 device, a wireless, high-bandwidth interface that translates brain activity into digital actions. Together, the human trial participants have accumulated over 15,000 hours of independent use. And these hours aren't being recorded in a lab. They're real-life hours of using the device at home, moving cursors, playing video games, sending text messages, and even operating robotic arms using only thought. So let's start with where Neuralink stands today, and then we'll look ahead to what's next. If you want more updates and information about Neuralink, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be one of the first 1,000 viewers of the video when I don't add any extra ads. Neuralink's progress from 2016 to now feels like making the transition from science fiction to science reality. It began in 2019, when the company unveiled its sewing machine robot, capable of implanting threads thinner than a human hair into the brain without damaging any blood vessels. In 2020, a pig named Gertrude demonstrated the team's ability to see real-time brain activity, and in 2021, a monkey named Pager played the video game Pong using only its thoughts. By 2023, Neuralink received FDA approval for human trials after years of preclinical testing. That approval kicked off the PRIME study, focusing on patients with paralysis and ALS. Then, in January 2024, Neuralink performed its first human implant, a man named Nolan Arbaugh paralyzed from the shoulders down. Within weeks, he was moving a cursor and playing chess again. Since then, other patients in Phoenix, Miami, Toronto, and London have received the implant. Now, one of the major figure of merits that we have is to keep track of monthly hours of independent BCI use. Effectively, are they using the BCI? And not at the clinic, but at their home. And what we have noticed, and this is a plot of all of the different participants, first five participants, and their usage per month uh, over the course of the last year and a half, and we're averaging around 50 hours a week of usage, and in some cases, peak usage of more than 100 hours a week, which is pretty much every waking moment. Those numbers represent people who once couldn't move their arms or hands, now controlling computers, designing in CAD software, or communicating only because of Neuralink. One participant with ALS, Nick Ray, used a robotic arm to feed himself. That's pretty freaking ridiculous. Nick and I had a conversation where he shared his experience using the device. And the quote you read earlier, the, the joyful glee of anticipation, losing that is a much, I mean, it's, it's, it's big. That's not a small thing losing losing joyful anticipation about the future completely is difficult it's life-changing and not a good way and getting that back regardless of whether i'm moving a cursor or controlling a robot arm or launching a meme coin Whatever I'm doing is I'm excited 
about being able to do the things that I don't even know I can do yet. Like, especially with Neuralink, in my opinion, the sky is the limit. Other patients design digital models, create art, and play games again, something they haven't done in years. But all this progress is not made without any challenges. Neuralink's first patient, Nolan, experienced thread retraction, where some electrodes had come out of the brain tissue. Before we get to more ideas, are you or anyone you know suffering from Lyme disease? Today's sponsor is Lyme Chart, an AI chronic care companion for patients managing Lyme disease, one of the most underserved and complex conditions. It helps patients organize their medical records, understand their symptoms, answer their day-to-day -day questions, and prepare for doctor's visits, all privately and securely. Do me a favor and click the link in the description to pre-order Lyme Chart for free. No credit card required. Thanks. This was a reminder that, after all, Neuralink is still actually conducting human trials. It has become so easy to take their progress and functionality for granted. But fortunately, after engineers looked into what happened, they solved the thread retraction problem by updating the brain's signal decoding algorithms and shallower insertion of the threads in later surgeries. After these improvements, Nolan ended up with better performance than he had initially. So the takeaway, although the progress is not a straight line up and to the right, the tech has largely proven to be safe, functional, and entirely life-changing. In September 2025, Neuralink performed its first international surgery in Canada, marking the start of a global rollout. DJ said this back in June. And we also have an approval to launch this trial in Canada, UK, and the UAE. Neuralink is now conducting studies in four countries, the ones DJ listed, and of course, the United States. That means new regulatory approvals, broader data, and new patients joining the trials. This expansion shows that multiple governments and ethics boards have reviewed Neuralink safety data and allowed it to proceed, a strong vote of confidence for a device that connects directly to the brain. The company's R1 surgical robot enables fully automated, high-precision operations. And with multiple sites now approved, Neuralink can perform surgeries more frequently, collecting more data faster. These international trials are a crucial step toward market readiness, where hospitals could one day offer Neuralink implants as treatment for paralysis, blindness, or other conditions like depression, PTSD, or tinnitus. Neuralink's implant, called the N1, is about the size of a coin. It sits flush with the skull and connects to the brain through 128 ultra-thin threads each containing eight electrodes. Those electrodes detect electrical signals from individual brain cells, and the implant transmits that data wirelessly via Bluetooth to a nearby device. The result is a high bandwidth bridge between your thoughts and phones or computers. The implant works hand in hand with Neuralink's custom built R1 surgical robot, which peels off each thread with micron level precision and inserts it directly into the brain tissue with extreme accuracy, avoiding blood vessels to minimize damage and ensure long-term stability. Neuralink software then decodes those brain signals in real time, allowing users to have full digital freedom by moving a cursor and typing messages. To put Neuralink's journey in perspective visually, here's how far they've come. Once I recap this, I'll explain what we can expect next. The company was founded just under a decade ago in 2016, and they were working hard to build an actually useful prototype. They showed their custom-built surgical robot and their prototype in 2019, followed by the pig demonstration in 2020, where they could detect real-time neural activity as the pig sniffed around. They continued with the animal testing and showed the monkey named Pager playing a video game as a human would, but then they removed that physical connection to the controller, highlighting the power of the brain-computer interface. Then in 2022, they gave another update presentation of a robot performing a mock surgery in live time. All of these pieces were painting a picture to the FDA that the team was ready to start human trials. The FDA gave them that approval in 2023, and at the beginning of 2024, Nolan Arbaugh became the first human in the world with a Neuralink implant. 
And when they showed Nick Ray feeding himself, think about how game-changing that is for him and his caretakers. Each of these milestones builds confidence, from the original proof of concept, to animal tests, to fully wireless human implants. The data gathered from these more than a dozen patients will shape the next generation of Neuralink hardware and help the company apply for broader clinical approvals in the coming years. So what's next for Neuralink? According to the company's leaders, the next big step is a thought-to-speech clinical trial being launched in the U.S. right around the time that this episode is published. This will target patients who have lost their ability to speak due to ALS or stroke. The same system they're using now is being built for massive scale. The use of a robot means they won't have to rely so heavily on neurosurgeons, which is important given that there are only so many credentialed neurosurgeons in the world. The foundation has been laid for their upcoming products, Blindsight, designed to restore basic navigation and eventually full vision, and another product reaching deeper brain regions that's intended to treat chronic pain and psychiatric disorders. Each product targets a different area of the brain, reading from and or stimulating neurons depending on the use case. Together, they represent Neuralink's generalized brain interface, a platform capable of being adapted to any neurological need. Blindsight is expected to reach human trials next year. Early simulations suggest that by stimulating the visual cortex, users could perceive outlines, contrast, and light, eventually evolving toward full-color, high-resolution sight. And in the further out future, maybe even more types of vision that humans can't see. For example, if the camera on your glasses can see infrared wavelengths, then those could be used to stimulate the visual cortex, and a Neuralink recipient could have superhuman vision. Beyond that, Neuralink is exploring hearing restoration and accessing deeper brain regions for helping with pain, mood, and memory regulation. They even have job openings for folks to work on implants in the hippocampus brain region. Moreover, in the latest presentation, DJ showed a slide expecting them to work on helping with epilepsy and tinnitus in 2028, which I know so many of you are excited about. In the longer term, Elon and the team's ambition remains the same, merging biological and artificial intelligence to keep humanity afloat in the AI-dominated world. There are still many challenges to make this happen, but one major challenge is scaling. The engineers are working to increase electrode count from 1,000 channels today to 10,000 and then 25,000 and beyond, enabling higher bandwidth and richer interaction with the brain. And that's just one type of scaling. They also need to be able to perform thousands of surgeries every month. And the way they'll do that is by using the R1 surgical robot and creating their own dedicated clinics like the one they have in Austin, Texas. Thank you to all Neuropod supporters and all of you for watching. I'm excited for the videos coming next, so subscribe to stay up to date on this inspiring technology.